Lakewood. In New York, it means you got the shot. And in Lakewood, it means you, you got the money from the government. <laughs> okay, volume six continues, page 311. We finished Trumas, Meisters, and Orla last week. Um, one of the larger technical, more complex topics that appear in Yoridea is that of taking a neder, a vow, or a shvua, an oath. We're going to learn the difference between the two. The Torah gives a person the ability to halachically prohibit upon oneself the, either the performance of an action or benefiting from an object that is otherwise permitted. As is apparent from the following pasuk in Parshas Matos, Ish ki yidor neder la Hashem, person makes a neder, or he shvua, or he takes a shvua, le asor isar al nafsho, where it, it's um, he takes an obligation upon himself. Lo yachel varo. He cannot go against the neder of the shvua that he took. He can't be mechalel his neder. Kechol ayotzei mi piv yaseh. Whatever, whatever comes out of his mouth, he, he has to do. So as we will see, most people today don't take actual vows or oaths, which were apparently taken more frequently in earlier times, as is evident from many sugis in the Gemara. For this reason, many people are not familiar with the halachos related to Nadori, which are quite elaborate. They comprise 37 simonim in Shulchan Aruch Yordea, from Simon 203 to 239. Nevertheless, there are still some aspects of this halacha that are very relevant. In this year, we will focus largely on the practical aspects of the halacha. So what's the distinction between a nether and a shvua? So before we exam, examine some practical aspects of the Dorman Shavuos, let's make sure we understand the definition of the terms. Although a neder vow and a shavua oath appear to be very similar in that they are both used to forbid a person from performing an action or deriving benefit from an object that is otherwise permitted, there's an important difference between them that, explain, that is explained by the Gemara Nador. Nador and Bez Abed Bez. I did it on the Dorim, the Mitzvah Chefsram. A neder is where you create the prohibition on the object itself. Taranami Haramim. Haramim is when you when you donate all of your assets to the base of Mikdash, the Mitzvah Chefsale. Also, the object becomes also to you. Both of those cases are la'afuke to exclude from a shvua the ka'asr nafshe min chepsa. That's more an isr gavra. A shvua is when you create an isr on yourself to eat something. It's not like you made the piece of bread a chepsa visr. No, I asr myself from eating it. A neder makes the piece of bread asr like a korban. So it's sort of the difference between a chef, making an isr chepsa and making an isr gavra. So according to Gemara, a nether is one prohibits an object, the chefs upon oneself. And the shvua, one person prohi prohibits oneself, gavra, from deriving benefit from the object. Now the Ran, who has an extensive commentary in Masech the Nadorim, explains that there's also a difference in the language used when declaring a nether as opposed to a shvua. For example, if a person wishes to prevent himself from eating a loaf of bread, the language used for neder would be, eating of this loaf is prohibited to me. Or this loaf of bread will be prohibited to me like a sacrifice. Like koinam ki karzu ki You The isser is made on the chefza, on the object, which focuses on the object, the bread being prohibited. On the other hand, if one uses the language of a shvua, one would say, Shavua that I will not eat. Shavua shalo ochel ki karzu. Right? Says the run. 
I did the Tan and the Dorm, the Mitzvah Hepsal, a Kloimar. Shoisra Kikar Lava Oimer Achilas Kikar Ze Alai. The eating of this Kikar is prohibited to me. Lafuke Shwood also Nafshim in Hepsa Kloimar, Shoimer, who are Shloy Ochel Kikar Zui. He placed the prohibition on himself not to eat it. Based on this principle, we can understand another Allah mentioned in the door in 16b, that if one takes a neder not to fulfill a mitzvah, the neder is valid. However, if one takes a shvua not to fulfill a mitzvah, the shvua is invalid. The reason given there is that a person is mushba v'oim in Sinai. We took an oath in our Sinai to take accept the Torah, meaning that he has already taken a shvua in our Sinai to fulfill all the mitzvahs. And there's a principle that ain shvua halal shvua. A shvua cannot take effect upon an existing shvua. So since we already took a shvua to perform all the mitzvahs, a second shvua to say, I take a shvua, I'm not going to put on tefillin. So it doesn't take effect because we already were, were, were mushba, the oimid mahar sinai to put on tefillin. A neder, though, can take effect upon an existing shvua. For the netter applies to the object of the mitzvah and does not prohibit the actual mitzvah upon the person. It applies to the chetzah, like I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to have benefit from that lulav. Well, you wouldn't be able to shake that lulav. Now, you could learn maybe mitzvah's lab land is that so there is no benefit. So we'll have to, the, the Gemara will give us other examples of that. Another principle that illustrates the same distinction between a netter and a shvua is mentioned by the Gemara early in the door. The Gemara states that a, shvu, a shvua even applies to cases where no physical substance is involved. For example, such as actions. I take a shvua that I will not speak with someone. Remember, a dibor is not a maisa. Nadorin, by contrast, cannot apply to things with no physical substance. You can't take a nether not to speak. Nether has to be chal on a physical substance. Since a nether takes effect upon the object itself, it cannot apply to something without physical substance. Now, is it preferable to avoid Nidorim and Shavuos altogether? Is it a good practice or not a good practice? So although the Torah sanctions the institution of the Dorim and Shavuos, the Tanoim and the Gemara and the Dorim dispute whether it's appropriate to utilize these mechanisms or not. Rameir holds that it is preferable not to use them, while Rabbi Yehuda opines that it is proper to take the dorm and shvuos on condition that one fulfills them. The, the Gemara Masech the Dorm Tes Amad Aleph quotes the Pasuk in Kohelet, Tova Sherloti Dor, better that you should not take a vow, Mishiti Dor, Veloti Shalim, then take a vow and not fulfill the payment. And the Gemara comments, Tov Mizel Mizeh, better than not taking a vow or taking a vow and fulfilling it, is Shana Nodia Kolikar, that you don't take a vow at all. Dear Rabbi, Rabbi Yudo Oimer, Tov Mizel Mizeh, Noi Der Mishalim. That is better than the one who doesn't take a netter is one who takes a netter and pays. So, point Rabbi Meir, not only does Kohelet recommend not vowing, if one does not fulfill the vow, but he also recommends not vowing even if you will fulfill it. As it is possible that at some point, one will not fulfill one of his vows, which would then be included in the case mentioned directly by Kohelet, a vowing and not fulfilling it. Rabbi Yudah on the other end holds that it's only best not to vow if one cannot fulfill it. But if one can fulfill it, then one is encouraged to vow. The Gemara in the continuation of the sugya there suggests that there may be a difference according to Rav Meir between one who brings a korban to the Beis Hamikdash as a neder or a nedava. The difference between a neder is it's, you, you say I I uh, alai the response hare uh, shlomim alai so you made a neder for you to bring a shlomim as opposed for you to do a nedava where you say the difference is if that if that if you say Hare Zu and that animal got lost, you're not required to replace it. But if you took 
a, a nether a lie is regarding korbanos, you would still have to be, you have to fulfill the nether. So, Rabbi Meir made a distinction between one who brings a korban to the base of Midrash as a nether and a dava, right? A commitment to bring a specific animal where the concerns that one may not bring it is not as relevant if one only consecrated, consecrates it upon arrival, the base of Midrash. The animal used to be chulen, and they used to bring the animal chulen to the base of Midrash and only then magdish it. So then there's no problem that you're not gonna, you're not gonna fulfill the vow. Nevertheless, it seems from the Shulchan Aruch below that with re regard to Nadorim in general, Reb Meir does maintain that it's, a, it's best to avoid them completely. The Shulchan Aruch appears to side with the approach of Reb Meir and declares that one should not take Nadorim regularly. He uses quite harsh language to describe one who does vow, even if he fulfills it. Person should not uh, have the practice of making the dorm. There are people who make a vow. Even if he fulfills it, Nikra Rasha, the Nikra Chote. He's a Rasha and a Chote. Continues the Shulchan Aruch. You shouldn't take any kind of vow. You shouldn't take a vow to give tzedakah. Ella in If you have the tzedakah, give it. Vim lablo yidor. He still shouldn't make a pledge. What about a nazir? Is it a nazir making a vow? So the same. We have the same achlokas in Masech the Nadorim, whether that was viewed favorably as well either. Right? It, uh, how could you prohibit something that a Kodesh Baruch gives you? Like wine? Yeah, but Shimshim is okay? I mean, because of Shimshim, that kind of Naziris is godly or what? Well, no. Shimshim's Naziris was very unusual. Naziris Shimshim, that didn't happen very often. No, but. Like you have the Nazir, right? The, the son in law of Rav, the, the, right. the father of Shar Yosh of Kohen. Um, Normally, Naziris was 30 days. If you said, Hareni Nazir, you were Nazir for 30 days. That's it. That vast 99% of Nazirim were that. It wasn't a lifelong Naziris. So, That's how did he do it? How did who so, do it? Uh, Goran's father in law. <laughs> yeah. he, he was above that. I mean, how did, it's a personal thing. You mean. Well, how many? So, by the way, you have a lot of very from people in the world, right? Hasidim and Ritvisha. You, you, you don't see a lot of Nazir. You don't, you don't see any Nazir. So no. obviously, uh, he's a freak. Yeah, it's it's not it's it. We see the Shulchan Aruch Paskins. We shouldn't take Nadorim at all, including the right. Nadorim that make you a Nazir. There, the Gemara goes through other issues besides the fact not to take Nadorim, but the, the, the Nazirus aspect. You're answering on yourself, something that really Hashem permits you, etc. So there also was a major debate regarding that. I don't know if the Shulchan Aruch says anything about Naziris itself, but you see, Naziris is a form of nether. So if the Shulchan Aruch tells you that you're a Russia, you're a Chote, by, becoming, by taking a nether of any kind, uh, it's problematic. So if you don't have the money to give Tzedakah, lo yido, achielo. When you have the means, you should give the Tzedakah. Now, the imposkim tzedakah, let's say they're gathering like the way we do in shul or whatever, and, and they're making a collection. That, so the Shulchan Aruch says, yes, I'll give, but based on this, it would seem that it is permitted to promise to do something or commit to observing a praiseworthy custom as long as one states believe never, that one is not doing it as a vow. This suggestion of saying believe never is recommended in some sources, even when committing to do something that is not specifically a mitzvah. And we're going to learn a little bit later on about ramifications of saying believe never. Now, it is clear from the following passage in the Shlach Kaddish. Though that one may not commit 
to a certain action or make a promise and they're not intent to, to fulfill it simply because one stated Bli Neder. Rather, a person must try to, to fulfill everything that they say. That means by saying Bli Neder, that's not an out to not do it. You have to try to do it. You're just doing it not as a Neder. Says the Shlom. This is by Parshas Matois. Lo yachel dvaro, person should not go against his word. Whatever came out of his mouth, he should do. Lechaura, kechol hayotzim mipiv yase hu miyuter. I mean, by saying lo yachel dvaro, don't go against your your net there. It seems that the words you should do what you what you said to do is superfluous. You already said it by saying lo yachel dvaro. Says the shlom. Elahu tocheches musar. It's a musar statement. Shehadam yeneman b'diburo. Person should learn that what he says he should fulfill. And he should fulfill what that which he said he's going to do. It's not, even though it's not in the derch neder, even though he was not obligated to do it. It's a very high mida. Whether it's matters of life and death, whether it's money. Hain Sedek, Lab Sedek. Hain is is uh, his yes is yes, and his no is no. And there's a very nice um, biography of a Shla Kodesh. Um, Rabbi Grumman, my Rabbi, once told me that to be Chsidish Rebbe, you needed to know two, two sets of scoring. You needed to know the Maral, and you needed to know the Shlach Kodesh. That set the groundwork to be a Rebbe. The, 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 the concepts there of Hasidus are sort of, even though both the Maral and the Shlach precede the Baal Shem Tov by hundreds of years. The Shlach, not so much. Uh, he, he did precede the Baal Shem Tov, but he, the Shlach is, is fundamental to Hasidus along with the Sifrei Mara. Rav Moshe Sternbuch writes similarly, right? Rav Moshe Sternbuch is the Mohadim Uzmanim. He is the po posseg for the Badats in Yerushalayim today. That one must keep his word in committing to perform a mitzvah, even if one said Bli Neder, unless he has good reason for not doing so. You made a, I'm going to do this mitzvah, Bli Neder, you should be mekayim the mitzvah. Shkol mitzvah is chayiv ba mira. A mitzvah you have to it becomes obligated when you state it. Shenemar beficha zut staka. So when you commit to giving staka, it's already considered staka. Rakiv and shem beze iser beikim tovah. But there's no prohibition since you didn't take a formal nether if you didn't fulfill it. So kishiyesh siba. If there's some kind of reason, you can nullify what you said. He didn't know uh, that in, in, if that if those specific circumstances would have occurred, he wouldn't have said it. But without a reason, if he already obligated himself to give stock, even he said, I believe Ned there, all of our mitzvah, he said, I'm going to learn, you, you, you said, I'm going to learn 10 blot of Gemara. I'm going to learn so many Simone Shulchanaro. So he has to fulfill what he said. It's not a complete obligation. You have to, you have to, you have to be mishtadel to fulfill your words. Now, even though up till now we have learned that in general the recommendation is not to take vows. There may be certain times that it is permitted or even encouraged. One of those examples, according to some, is an ace sorrow, a time of distress, perhaps the time of the pandemic. Just as Yaakov Avinu took a neder when fleeing from Esau, right? Vaidar Yaakov neder lay more. So too, anyone may do likewise in a time of need. Tosfos and Chulun, Chulun daf beis on the days. 
takes this approach that it is permitted to take a nether in a time of need. Vim toimar. You're going to ask me, Vaxi, Vaida Yaakov nether, how could Yaakov take a nether? Uksiv es asher nadarta ashalma. On, on which it was said, that which I made a nether, I'm going to pay it back. In a time of distress, it's permitted. means was giving direction to his later generations that if it's an eighth tsara for Yaakov, then you can take a nether. The Ritva, right, one of the Rishonim, also holds that it's permitted to take a nether in such a situation. And he adds two other examples where all agree that it's permitted to vow. Venidre Hegdish Dilachapara, vows that you're making to the base of Midrash for atonement. Oshel Mitzvah Lizruze Nafshe, you want to take a nether to arouse yourself to do a mitzvah, or Inami Be'ez Tzara. Or in a time of distress, it's permitted to take a net there. Although Tosis writes that it's merely permitted to vow during an ace tsara, the Piske Tosfis, which is a summary of rulings given by Tosfis, and the Shilte Giborim state that it's even a mitzvah to take a net there in such situations. It's not permitted, it's, it's not just permitted, it's, it's a mitzvah, says the Piske Tosfis. Mitzvah Lindor Bishas Tsara. And the Shulte Giborim also said, Miu Nira, the Nether Ace Tsara, the Akrof of Rabbonim Basvoi. The later Rabbonim would not undo the Nedorim with Hatoras Nedorim once somebody took such a vow. Why? Because Mishum Mitzvah Diyesh Benoy Dirzeh. Because there's actually a Mitzvah to take a Nether in a time of Ace Tsara. In fact, the Orach HaShulchan, right, the more recent posek, states that although Tosis used the word permitted, they too mean that it's a mitzvah, like the Piske Toifis and the Shilte Giboy. Because of Rabbeinu Abes Yosef, right, of Yosef Karo in his commentary, the Beis Yosef on the tour, wrote, the Be'es Tzara Mutter Lindor, that you're permitted to take a vow in a time of distress. Ad kam l'shono. V'chein kosu rabuseinu bali at tois v'spereish kulim. So to uh, said tois v's, that's, that's chulim uh, daf beis which we learn. Umidiv rabuseinu eile mashma, it seems from the beis Yosef, the tois v's, says the Orach HaShulchan, derak muter lindor v'lo mitzvah. You're permitted, but it's not necessarily a mitzvah. That making a neder is a mitzvah when you're in a time of distress. Because Mao Lemor, when it says Lemor by Yaakov, Lemor Ladoiris, to tell the first two generations. That it's going to be a, a mitzvah to take a neder in a time of distress. Ad kam l'shono, that's the medrash rabba. Umashma the mitzvah ikar lindor beisor. So from there, it seems that it's not just mutter; it's a mitzvah. And then he quotes the rishonim that said the favorish that it's a mitzvah, right? With piske toisvus, cause of loshen mitzvah ayin sham. Ach bemet akol echad. The aruch hashulchan says really. It's all, they're all the same. The Kivan Shemutu Lindor, once you say it's permitted in Cain, Kishem Shemitzvah Lispalel, Lashem Be'ezara. Just like it's a mitzvah to daven to Hashem when you need help. Kimochei Mitzvah Lindor, Achein's a mitzvah v'choy v'kishari mitzvahs. You're a mitzvah to them, but it's not the same sort of obligatory mitzvah v'choy v'kidamin ba'alma, mitzvah l'gabi choy Rishus Karima, that a mitzvah as compared to an obligation, it's really still, it's a Rishus. It's not like a Choy that uh, on the night of Pesach, you have to eat the Korban Pesach. It's not the same type of Choy. 
Me ain't suffix says the Archa Shulchan, the mitzvah lindor beis sara. He says it's, it's a mitzvah to make a neder. Shari ksiv nidro v'shamal Hashem lo kechem v'hu tzibu lindor l'shalem hu beis sara hu. David Melch was running away, so it's like a mitzvah to make a neder and to pay. K'dixiv l'ami ne b'kum l'mishpat elokim sheris chametach gor is rab psukim and tilim v'chein the mitzvah elsa shachar. The Meir Beis Tzara Oimer Sham, Nidorai Ashalem Neged Yireya. That I will fulfill my neder. So, right now it seems that, based on a, a, a number of Rishonim and the Orach Hashulchan, that it's a mitzvah to take a neder Beis Tzara. Others hold that it's forbidden to vow, even in a time of distress, and that's implied by the Shita Mekubetzes, one of the Rishonim, and the Rashba. Frey to Gemara, excuse me, the Shita Mikubetas on the Dorim test asks, it says, Vayidar Yaakov Ned there, how did he do it? Koydematim Torah have the Lekatakoma. There was no problem that if he didn't fulfill his vow, that there'd be uh, some kind of problem because it was before Matan Torah. There was no commandment of Loyachel Varo. And the Rajba also says, that which people say that you can take a ned there in a time of distress, wasn't the full ned there. It was It was a thank you to Hashem for saving him. And the Shulchanach rules in accordance with the opinions that it is permitted to vow in times of distress. Shulchanach Reish Gimel, the same simon, says, the eighth Sar Mutter Lindor. He says it's permitted to take a vow. And according to the opinions of all that it's permitted, it's a mitzvah to do so. The Shulchan Aruch would say the same thing. Now, the Yalkut Yosef notes, in addition, that one should try not to perform a Torah's Nidorim on such a vow. So you need to exclude. This vow that you took the eighth sorrow from Atar's Nidor. Hanoyer be'ez sorrow, yesh oim m'shein la'at your nidro. El l'tzorach mitzvah, unless there's a reason to perform another mitzvah, you gotta be matir. Ol l'tzorach gadol, or for a great uh, need to be matir. V'yim yesh sofik b'losh na neder m'chal b'chlal, then yecholim la'atiro. This is sofik, based on the language we, you used when you first took the neder, whether the nether even had a chalois, so then you can be matir the nether by the hatoras nidor. Other types of vows that may be permitted include what is known as nidre zruzin, vows of encouragement, whereby one takes a nether that he will learn a specific section of Torah or fulfill a mitzvah in order to encourage himself to do so. According to Gemara, these two are permitted. Nevertheless, the Chochmas Adam cautions against doing this in case he's unable to fulfill it. Today it seems that the prevalent custom concerning these types of issues is to refrain from taking a full neder, but rather to commit to doing whatever you're going to commit and say, bli neder. So what impact does the uh, kol nidre have on this discussion? I mean, we say Yom Kippurim Zed, Yom Kippurim Habalein so that whole year, whatever you said, has really no effect. So Right, so we're going to, I think later on, uh, they're going to have a discussion of what Kol Nidre is all about. It's not really that that's why we do a formal Hattaris Nadorim era of Rosh Hashanah, where we're Matir, the, we, we are Matir Nadorim here. And if you remember, if you remember the Nusach there, there are some specific ex exclusions. We say, I'm going to be, ma I want to be, I want to do all my Nadorim except for certain exceptions, which relate to this kind of concept that we just said. I don't, I don't think we say be'ez tzara, but we do exclude certain things. The kol nidre is, 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 not, a, is not a full formal hatoris nador. It's something that is said currently because it's got emotional value. They, the, the, this stems from the Murano community during the Inquisition when many people converted to Christianity but kept Judaism secretly. Many of those people would come to shul Kol Nidre night. And that's why we say Yeshiva Shalmala, we, 
those those that are accepted in the in the in the al das those that are not accepted, and 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 so it's more it's more symbolic that we continue to say the kol nidre. Now there are there are halachic discussions about what the kol nidre is all about, and I we will have that I think in this in the sugya of of the door. But Thank the, you. Real, what about, uh, the real nullification, uh, the real nullification is, by, is by Arab Rosh Hashanah when we do the Torah, the Dorm with the Bezdin and all of that. And, so and I there we'll see, become... you, you, we, we do make some exclu- exclusions of certain Dorim that we don't want to be matir at that time. Yes, Alan. If he comes, uh, takes in the series before Pesach, when he, uh, when he can, makes himself not allowed to drink for arbacosis, which is a uh, derisive, I don't know if it's derisive, but still, so he should be matir nether, and then to, we resume it after, after Pesach? Again, we, we, you should, we, we pass him tonight that you shouldn't take any nador. I know, but if he does, if he says, if he's nazirus, let's say shlo so, yom, so does right. he, then does he, uh, the, he, he's, in order for him to, to, by the to way, fulfill. By the way, the the introduction that we did tonight between the different difference between a neder and a shvua, you'd have a problem with the neder because what you you would say, I'm ushering this wine on me. It's not it's not a it's an isra on the chefza. So wine is a prohibited su- object for you. So now and it, it has chalos even on mitzvahs. So as opposed to a shvua, if I you, if you say shvua, I'm not going to drink wine. And you have a din of uh, drinking wine on Pesach, the Dalit, even though that's only Drabonon. But it's where Mujba Boy made that we have to follow the rabbinic laws. So you can't take an oath. If you, if you did it in the language of a Shavuah, it wouldn't have a chalos on that mitzvah. And you'd be able to drink the wine. But if you took a neder, that would be an afkamina here. If you took a neder that the wine is prohibited to you, you wouldn't be able to drink the Dalit Koisos. If you weren't matir, if you didn't, if you didn't make sure and had a Taurus Nadorin beforehand, you, are you with me, Al? Yeah, yeah, I share. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Okay, we're at three twenty. Is accepting a minhag considered like a neder? Many people have taken on minhagim on things that otherwise are permitted, but they've taken on certain restrictions as a minig question question becomes does that become like a nether as mentioned in the previous section today we try to avoid taking an actual nether or shvua even when it is technically permitted that means even based sara and instead declare that any such commitment to be bli nether so what we, we came out that even for dvar mitzvah or to be mazares yourself to learn torah you should always say bli nether what happens if someone made such a commitment to accept a particular custom or to learn a specific Torah subject without saying bli neder? It seems for the Gemara Nadorim that even such an acceptance is treated as if one had vowed. So dvorma mutorim, normal, normally permitted things, vacherim nogu bayanisr, and some people observe a prohibition, iat hai latirin bifneim. You cannot just permit the, these people who, who have taken the minig to, pro, to follow some prohibition. You can't just be matter them. Shenem lo yachel dvaro. It uses the pasuk of nedorim, seeming to apply imply that people who took on certain customs, it's as if they made a net. Right? It seems for the Gemara in Psachim 51 that the reason for this halacha is that concern exists that if one is permitted to simply cease the custom, one may also come to permit other matters that are truly forbidden to him based upon the dorm taken. The Ran appears to adopt this understanding as well. The reason why we say that people who took upon customs, that they should continue the custom, is because they should not sort of dilly-dally with real Nadorm that they took. The fact that they took a custom to prohibit something for themselves 
it becomes like a Dovra Osir. Let's say a person says, I'm not going to eat meat and wine for the next month. He needs to go to Bezdin for a Taurus Medorn. Now, the Shulchan Aruch adopts this principle that customs accepted above and beyond the strict halacha for the purpose of an extra stringency or other Torah related motive have the status of a neder, and a Torah is required if one wishes to cease observing it. Although the Shulchan Aruch uses the example of the Gemara that deals with a custom to refrain from a certain activity, it would seem that the same applies to a similar custom of a positive nature, not just, oh, I'm not gonna do something, but let's say you, you, you take on a custom to do something, which is positive. For example, like learning a certain su some subject matter. Says the Shulchan Aruch, this is in your day, a ratio Dalad, Dvarma mutarim, normally permitted things. Vayoyim behem she mutarim, nogim be misr. And there are certain people who know that normally it's permitted, but they have had a custom to prohibit themselves with it. Havi ki ilu kiblu malem kineder, or bineder. It's as if they took a neder. Vaosu latira behem. You can't just permit it. You got to do a formal haktoras nedor. For example, there were people at certain fasts, let's say the, the day after the first sliches. There were all sorts of customs people would fast before Rosh Hashanah, the Shabbat Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippurim, or they had fasts between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. <laughs> Remember, the Shulchan Aruch is a Sephardi, right? He's Rav, he's Rav Yosef Karo. So they held that on, in it's Shvur Shechalbo only that you can't eat meat. They didn't have the din from Rosh That's an Ashkenazi custom of not eating meat from Rosh Chodesh So the Shulchan Aruch is describing people who don't eat meat or wine from Rosh Chodesh or even from Shivasa Bittamas, which is a custom we don't know. And he wants to go back on that. Now, of course, once Klai Yisrael accepted the prohibition, it's not a personal letter anymore. But this, this must have been at a time where people were taking private uh, customs before it was accepted in Kla Yisrael. But in that time, if it was private, if for example, when he started the custom, his, his idea was to do it forever, the Noah cannot feel pamachas, and he did it one time, so this concept of you need it three times, you don't need it. If, 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 when you began the custom, you had in mind that you're gonna do it forever. When you practiced it one time, you need Hatar already. The Yiftach, and now it's giving advice to the Bezdin. Yiftach becharata. Charata means regret. That you have regret that you took it in the formal way of a neder. That if you would have known that it would create this problem, would you have taken would you have taken it there? Would you have taken it with its formal letter? Absolutely not. And we will learn the, 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 the rules of Atar Snodorim shortly. Now, the second half of the above quote from the Shulchan Aruch addresses the question of what type of acceptance is considered binding. He says that if one is in, intended to observe the custom permanently, then it is binding even after doing so once. The Mishnah Brura though notes that if one did not have in mind to observe the custom continuously, let's say you, well, you first started doing it, so I'll try it out. Then it's not considered to have the status of a nether until one observes the custom three times. 
says the Mishnah Bura, I in your day of Simon Reish Yud Dalit, the Mashma Sham, the Minak Shal Mitzvah Shanasa Kenedir, that if you have some kind of custom that became like a Mitzvah for you, that became like a Nedir, Hurakisha Hurgulba, or Afilu Pamachas, Hurgulba means he became accustomed to it, or Afilu Pamachas for Chasha Bashas Maisha Shin Kalaylam. If you do it one time, but you have in mind, you're going to do it forever. But without that, it's not just enough one time. So what is the halacha if one mistakenly thought that the practice one accepted was obligatory, but in reality, it was optional? Is that an acceptance considered like taking a vow? Right? Up until now, we've been learning that that kind of thing is, I know for sure that it's permitted, but I'm gonna answer it on myself. So that we said was a Kabbalah. But this is a case where you think that this prohibition is a chov on you. You didn't know that it's normally permitted and you're just doing it as a chumrah. Is that an acceptance like taking a vow? Tosus claims it's not based on the Yerushalmi. Therefore, one would not be required to abstain from such a practice in front of those who are stringent about it. And one, and one who does practice it would be permitted to cease the practice after discovering that it's not forbidden, even without a Torah the dorm, because it's not a nether, says Tosfus. He made a mistake. He thought He thought that this was a prohibited practice, but really, have a mutter. He can do whatever he wants in front of other people who, for example, practice that prohibition. And the it says it's clear from Yerushami. Not so fast, though. On the other hand, the Ran disagrees. It's Rishonim, Tosis versus the Ran, and holds that even if one mistakenly thought that the particular practice was forbidden or obligatory, and he, he started acting that way, even though it's permitted, it's still binding upon them as nether to ensure that people do not come to be lenient in cases where the Nedorim are actually binding. Like we said before, there was almost like a gzeira. Here we're talking about permitted things. And people had a practice to prohibit. And Let's say some people thought that it's actually midino from the from the point of law, it was also not that it was permitted and oh. it's just a, a chumrah. You cannot just be matir and, and permit permit someone to go back. The people will make a comparison and think, and by other nadorm, they could also do it. Hatter, he, he's not going to make a mistake with, between a regular nether. Let's say the parents treated something as prohibited. Let's, let's say gebrochts on Pesach. I don't know if they're going to bring that up. But let's say the parents had a certain iser. I mean, technically gebrochts was something that was permitted. And there became a stringency, I don't know when, 300 years ago, 400 years ago, whenever, it was permitted. And now the Ovos are Noyeg Iser, the Dover Shumutr, Mishum Migdur Isura. They're making a fence. Uvneyen She'en Abnei Torah, Sovereign Shemin Adina Surimbo. And then the, the children who are not Tamine Chachamim, they don't know that it's really just a Chumrah. And they think that it's also Min Adin. You shouldn't tell him it's only Osrami custom. Because otherwise they will be, they will minimize the stringency around it. So the Shulchan and Ramo both rule in accordance with Tosfas that acceptance of a custom is only treated as a net there when the person was aware that the action is technically permitted. However, the Shulchan Aruch does mention the opinion of the Ran as a Yeshomer, right? Those who practice some kind of prohibition of an item that's really permitted, but they think 
Machmash is from Shem Yisrael, but they think it's actually also an Adin. So he passes Lohavi Kilu Kibul Benedir. It's not like a Nether. And therefore, you don't need a Torah. The Yesh Misha Omer, that's the Ron. Shem Toyab no Yisrael, but the Ramutur Nishal, Matim lo Bishlosh, Kena Tos Nador. However, it says the Ramah for us on the Shkenazim, Haminik is for Rishona. That, that it's not considered a nether, you would not be mat to nether, if you eventually find out that really it's a permitted thing. We will conclude this section by noting that after seeing the potential complications, that accepting the fulfillment of a worthy practice, halachic stringency or custom can entail, one can easily understand why it is recommended to always state that one is doing so bli nether to avoid questions. And the Shulchan Aruch mentions it. First one wants to practice certain prohibition to something that is normally permitted. For frumkeit, for staying away from sin. He should make a Kabbalah. I'm not accepting it as a neder. The gam yoimar. She'en b'dayto lino came. And he should say, he should say it's not forever. I will, I think I stated this before, when I was a chief resident in urology at UCLA and I was on the kidney transplant service where I was called at any time and I have to do a kidney transplant. And it was the summer and I used to have a minig to fast on when I commemorated the yard site of my father. By the way, it, it, it's, it, it's certainly not a chova, it's not obligatory. The shulchan and, and and the, the post can bring down that it's a minig yofe. To many other, many of you also might have the Sydney, did you ever have a minig to fast on the art site? No, I've heard the minig, but I've never done it. Exactly. So I did it. I, I did it more than three times uh, because I did it, uh, you know, right from the beginning, uh, very much so. And it was a Sunday. I'll never if it was a Sunday. And it was like one in the afternoon. And I had to go or two in the afternoon and I had to go do surgery. And it was just not correct to go into the surgery fasting. So I, the Kolel, the Lakewood Kolel had run my best and the Lakewood Kolel had moved to, it was in the eighties, the Kolel was there in the back of Rabbi Ginsburg, sorry, back of Rabbi Gansweig. And they convened a Besden of three and they did not Taurus Nadorin because they felt that since I had done it more than three times, it was already considered like a netter. And even though I had never taken a Kabbalah, I never actually said, like they say, oh, when you take a Kabbalah, I never physically said something. And I never consciously said, oh, I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. But they, they were mater netter. They said, well, if you would have known at the time that you made the net, at the time you started this, that this would have come up, would you have accepted it? I said, no, that's the charata. So that's, a, that's an actual case. Um, I don't know if anybody else have had cases like that, but that fits into this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's like Ashkenazi, okay. uh, if a uh, Sephardic uh, girl marries an Ashkenazi man what, and Pesach, what does she have to, to make a netter to, uh, to uh, be able to um, eat, eat the rice on Pesach? You know what? We're going to have, hang on. I saw... Customs accepted by one's parents. We're going to have a, we're going to have a whole section on on this issue. So let's 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 we're probably going to do that next week. Um, so that'll come up. Okay, that's good okay. question. Yeah. With all and, and all of these minogim like gebracht and and other minogim that you have in your family that are prohibitions. We'll see what the what the uh, what the shulchan says about all of that. So. Now, since we've opened up the door of Atoris Nadorim, 
be nullifying the Dorim, we're going to go through that sugya. That is a relevant sugya for us. You can see it's something that happened to me. And also, we all do Hatoras the Dorim, Erev Rosh Hashanah. Um, so it's worth to know the halachas. Right? In cases where one took a netter or accepted a custom or stringent practice in a manner that was binding, like we said, according to the Mishnah Burr, three times, or when you take it, you say, I'm going to do it forever. There's a way to absolve oneself of the obligation to fulfill it, known as Hatars Nadorim, the permitting or releasing of vows. The Mishnah notes, though, that the notion of Hatars Nadorim is not mentioned anywhere in the Torah. Says the Mishnah Chagiga, Hatun Nadorim, Porchin Bavir. There, they have no support. They fly in the air. The Elam Al Mashi It's a, uh, it's part of the Chazal's oral tradition, but it's not based on any psukim. The more there presents, however, the opinions of other Tanoim, who do point to allusions in the Torah for Atar Sadoim. Tanya Rabbi Ezra Oymer. No, I disagree. There are uh, sources for them to rely on. Shenema ki yafli. Yafli means you, you, you use your mouth to make a net there. One is using your mouth to prohibit yourself by making mm -hmm. the net there. And one of flaw is to actually undo it. I took an oath when I was angry. The api nishbati, the chazrani bi. Yes, I, sw I swore the oath, but I retracted it. And from there is, is, is a basis for the Hattoras Nadar. Rabbi Yitzchak Goymer, Yesh Rabbi Mashi Yisvach Shonem are kol nadiv libo. Whoever is of a willing heart should bring the korban. However, if he regrets, if he doesn't have a willing heart, and that's the mechanism how the Hattoras Nadar is done by showing that really if you knew what you know now, you would not be willing, so then it gets undone because of <laughs> that I swore and I fulfilled it to observe your your chukecha. Which means lachura. Some of the not some of the oaths that I've taken, I, I've 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 uh, fulfilled, but not necessarily all of them. If I would have been there when they said mine is the best. He should not go against his words. Who but other people can be can be moichelim for the words he said. This last one has no kash. You can't ask a kash against it. So, although unlike other halachos of the Dorim, Hatoras the Dorim is not mentioned explicitly in the Torah. There are nevertheless numerous details related to its proper performance. A few of which we will discuss here. Born Gittin, sites of Machlokas Amiroim, whether one performing Hatoras the Dorim must specify the nether that he wishes to annul. Says Ibo in the Sakti Gitan Lamade Dov Ahmed Bays, Ibo Tsarakufart on that there? Do you have to list, you have to make a listing of all in the door? Oh I know Tsarik. Ravnakunam Aino Tsarik. Rav Papam or Tsarik. So it's Maklikas Ravnakun Rav Papa. Although the Gemara does not determine which of these opinions is accepted as Dalacha, many Rishonim, including the Rajbon the Rosh, rule that one must detail the nether. And if one does not, the Torah is not valid. Says the Rashba below Ivshati. So many times in the Gemara, those of us in the Dafyomi know, it'll, it, it'll, the Gemara will end. So many times, the Gemara paskins how the halacha is like. But as we know, many times, the Gemara states two opinions, like it did here, and we're left holding the bag. And I think this is valuable to us to see 
how did the Shulchan Aruch get to the halacha when the Gemara itself didn't give uh, a simon? So, of course, the Shulchan Aruch relied on the Rishonim, the Rambam, the Rif, the Rosh, the Rashba. And that's, here we go, says the Rashba, below Ifshite, and the Gemara didn't resolve who the halacha was like. However, Miu Kaimalan did Tzarek. Says the Rajma, we all that it, it, you you do need to detail it. He doesn't tell us from where he got it. That means even with the Eved, if they did it and they did not detail it, it's not a no. Says the Shita Mikubetras, another we shown that if you did not specify the net of that Torah, it's still valid. Though he says, even though you didn't know it, if the Eved, it's okay. Rilchas a craft papa that you have to list it. When you come to the Rav, he, he should make you list it. So the Shulchan Aruch rules like the more stringent opinion and like the Rajba and adds that one must also specify the reason why he took the Neder in the first place. What was the net and why did you do it? It's a sagi. It's enough. He doesn't have to give the details to all of the rabbonim. Just if he gave to one of them, it's enough. Okay, I'm going to stop here, and we will go a little bit more into how the hatara works and uh, who who can do it. What hap- what's the difference between when we do it like in Arab Rosh Hashanah and you go to Besdin as opposed to going to Besdin? Can you do it by a shaliach? Um, and what is special about the Atoros the Dorm of Arab Rosh Hashanah? And then we will talk about Atoros the Dorm for a custom. And this issue about Minhokim that you accept from your parents. Now, because Pesach is around the corner. Um, I plan on learning the Sphere Sa'oimer halachis. So we'll prepare, we'll be prepared for Sphere Sa'oimer. Come, because that's how that, even though it's not part of your idea, uh, we'll take, like we've done that before. I think, in fact, last year we learned all the halachas of the Seder. If you remember, that was right before the Seder, we learned all the Hilchos Seder. Or was it two before years? Or also. I think Purim also Purim, did that. I think we've been learning the Tzorba for two years now, correct? It's two years, not one year, two years. Really? It was, we did it for a no. year before COVID when we did it in my home. And it's been a year that we've been doing it COVID-wise. Yeah, it's two years. Sydney's correct. One year we learned all the locals of Purim, interspersed with the Yordaya. We also did the laws of the Seder, I think, the first year. So we'll do Sphere Soimer. And by the way, I've ordered for all of us volume seven, but I haven't gotten it yet. So I'll have to, I have to, uh, I have to get on top of them and see when they're shipping that. So we don't have any kind of delay. But I think that this, I think Sphere Soimer is going to require, is going to require two weeks worth. Maybe not. We'll see. There's also a, a supplementary COVID one you said. Did that come out? That's what we're, no, that's, that's volume seven. So is it the same as Fierce Omer? No. Fierce Omer is at the back of here, volume six. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Volume seven is, is the COVID one. Volume seven is um, out already. I think that's the next one we're going to learn. Volume seven what? is out. What was that? Volume seven is out. Okay. If, okay. if if COVID is, is is solved, then we won't have to learn it, right? Well, I I will <laughs> I will find out. I will get. I will find out some information when they're sending me the volume sevens. Okay. Sure. Good night. Right. Good night. Sure. Very good. Good night. Good night.